have somebody say it's the highest praise. Hallelujah. 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 I thank God for being home. Yeah. Hallelujah. Ah, the little girl said there's no place like home. Yeah. There's no place like home. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, it's not only be good to be home, I'm excited in my heart to see y'all. Is that all right? Is that all right? Can I say it like this? I thank those that are online and it's good to see your smiling faces. Hallelujah. Hey, Amen. For, for a while there, I, I just, ooh. You know, you hear stories about Texas, how big Texas is. But my son, future son in law, and I took four hour shifts which worked out perfectly because it took about three quarters of a tank to do four hours. Amen. Then we would shift, we trade drivers. So I took the first leg and then he took, you know, we started off in Katy, Texas. Amen. And, and I drove my shift and he drove his. And when I woke up, we still in Texas. <laughs> so when is this thing going in? <laughs> and, and, and I saw some things and, and you know, pastor's mind just be doing the stuff. Amen. So many times without my permission. Uh, my mind, you know, something different about California. Trucks can do 55. That's what the science says. Everybody else doing whatever. But the trucks are supposed to do 55. In Texas, if the sign says 70, everybody get to do 70. <laughs> trucks, everybody. Uh -oh. Amen. Amen. And then, you know, we dragging the trailer, so we're not going that fast. We're only doing about 70. Then the speed limit says 75. I said, okay, we all right, we all right. And then it was like, everybody was getting irritated with us. The cars were getting irritated with us. The trucks were getting irritated with us. And something had happened. You know, I'm make this make sense, right? Stick with me. Something happened that I was not aware of. There was a limit change. The speed limit went up to 80 miles an hour. Now we going slow. Yeah. And everybody, including the trucks, blowing past us. Now we driving the trailer, so we ain't gonna do no 80 miles an hour, y'all. So your pastor ain't crazy. Amen. Yeah. But I began to think to myself, God, I need to get home. You give me a way to get home. And it seems like it's taken a long time. <laughs> but something changed and I didn't see it happen. Then I saw the sun that said 80 miles an hour. I said, okay, that's why everybody's going past us so fast. Amen. Do you not know that God does things from heaven? And he does things and we don't see it right away. Come on, stick with me. We don't see it right away, but it's already been spoken of for us. Yeah. Somebody say access. access. Hallelujah. Because uh, I went down to Texas, amen, and you know, I'm going to go to church somewhere. And I went to church and then I introduced myself to the superintendent, amen. That there was two churches, Lord said, go to that one. And it was further away than the first one. I said, okay, Lord, so I went to that one. And the pastor said, you're going to preach for us. I said, okay. It's customary. If you get there after the pastor's preaching, you sit down. But if you get there before, they are to ask if you want to preach. I said, I'll preach for you. And I preached for them. And I discovered something that's universal. We all going through. Amen. Whether you're in Texas, whether you're in Fresno, whether you're in Manteca, we're going through some stuff. But what I want to do and what God impressed in my heart is that we're going through things. But let me let me ask you this. Have you ever bought something like a car or, or some kind of device around the house and, and you're sitting there using it? And then all of a sudden somebody comes over and, and you look at it and go, I didn't know I could do that. <laughs> you ever do that? Yeah. Hey Amen. I drove a car downtown, down to LA one time. My wife and I, we, we used one of the training center cars because, you know, they said, come on down. So I drove a Cadillac. And I was down there pushing on buttons, trying to get things just right. And all of a sudden, this thing started. 
massaging my back. And I said, I didn't know I could do that. <laughs> Amen. You, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Amen. And, and, and then I got controls in my own car. When, when it did, I didn't know I could do that. My wife's truck, you, you start veering out the lane, it pull you back in. Take your hands off the wheel, it'll go around the curve. And you know what we said? We didn't know we could do that. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So if we got to go through, and we do, and you want the full counsel of God's provision for you, why do we want to wait till we get to an advanced age before we say stuff like, I didn't know I could do that. Right, right. Oh, you be going somewhere today. Right. The message is called access. Somebody say access. access. Uh -huh. now, now, when it comes to the devil, it's access denied. Right. When, when the enemy tries to bring some stuff on you, as they might say, well, my, my folks used to say, go on now. Go on now. When you was getting on the parish nerve, go on now. Because if you don't go now, I'm going to find something for you to do, so go on now. And we were going outside. Stand there for a while because we didn't know we was going to. And what we was going for, we just know if we didn't get out of there, we're going to be dusting, sweeping, mopping, cleaning dishes that's already been cleaned, you know, going out. Amen? Amen? So when it comes to him, come on now, I know you come to afflict me, I know you come to bother me, but if I got the authority, I'm going to use it. Amen. Somebody tell him, go on now. Amen. But what we want is access to the full counsel of what God has for us. Yeah. I don't, I don't want to get to heaven and, and find out that all I had to do was tell him, go on now. Uh-huh. But when my mind starts saying, well, why don't we go do this? That looks like fun. And you tell the devil, go on now. Because yeah, right. that's not in the will of God. Amen. We're waiting on him to do something. And he's waiting for us to just ask for it. I'm going to give you a moment. Okay. Now, now, why did I give you a moment? Because the stuff that's plaguing you right now, health, pains in your body, children, pains in your head. I was thinking about another part of my anatomy, but I'm, not, I'm in church. <laughs> Financial issues. Come on. Because you worry about it ain't gonna change nothing. He said, why do you worry about these things? You can't change your height. You, you can't change your gray hair. I think every time I'm gonna say that, I'm thinking about my mind. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. Let me just move on. They say, move on, move on, son. Hey, ain't no men in here. Hey, ain't no Miss Clark, Claire all there. No. Tell people God's working on a new look and he ain't done yet. <clears throat> I'll see it one day. You see, things change in heaven before I see them here. Hallelujah. Okay, I'm going to go somewhere now. Uh, let me do this before I begin. Uh, can I do this? Yes. Will you do it with me? Yes. Father, in the name of Jesus, be with us this day, O oh God. Keep us in perfect peace as we keep our minds steady. Show us thy will, show us thy way. God, that we may have access. To the enemy, we say access denied. To you, Lord, we say you have full access. Take us to another level, God. Take us to the point of revelation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Many seek unity in the flesh. What are you saying? Peace. You want peace in your home. You want a peaceful ride to church. You want peace. You want peace on the way home. You want, amen, peaceful meals. There's no argument about who gonna clean the dishes. It's just, it's just peace. We love to have peace. But there, there's something that we uh, must understand that there are standards that God has put in place. And he gave us ways to practice our standards. Yeah. 
What are you saying? Well, in Numbers 2 and 2, not the message, Numbers 2 and 2, every man of the children of Israel shall pitch his own standard with the insignia of their father's house. Far up about the tabernacle of the congregation shall they pitch it. In other words, I will be able to look around and find home. By looking for the standard that stands. Mm -hmm. uh, these are standards. When, when you see uh, that flag, it, it, at one time it meant quality. It meant freedom. If you saw it on a package, it meant quality. Amen. It, it, it represented something. When we see this standard, it, rec it represents Christianity, which should tell you we have standards. We don't do things that, amen, the world does. Yes. And when we try and incorporate the world, God says, no, no. In fact, the practice that we have is, is the standard of the family. Because uh -huh. so, so, we are known for you fill in the blank. What are you saying? Uh, uh, baby, we don't do that here in our house. You, you know that, that double-ended question? Do you run in your house, baby? Mm -hmm. Well, you don't do it here. <laughs> right? <laughs> do you run in your house, honey? No. Well, you don't do it here either. <laughs> so no matter what you answer, you still lose if you run it. You, you all right with me? You okay? Can I be happy to be home? Yeah. Hey. Uh, 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 for me, I'll speak for myself. Uh, the Johnsons don't do that. Right. That's not how we act. That's, how we That's a standard. What goes on in the John What goes on in the Johnsons' house stays in the Johnsons' house. Now, from a carnal standpoint, that sounds secretive, and you and they're doing something. From a heavenly standpoint, what goes on in the Johnson house is still under construction. And we don't need folks judging us because we're not perfect in their eyes. We have to be perfect in his eyes. Hallelujah. Amen. Like I said, if he's working on a new look and he ain't done yet, amen. So what do you mean? This day uh -huh, is perfect. It may get grayer. But today is perfect. Is perfect. Mm -hmm. There's another scripture I'd like to bring to your attention. Uh, so shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and from his glory and the rising of the sun. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. Yes, See, the first standard I spoke of was man's standard. Now we're talking about God's standard. Hallelujah. Because he protects us. Yes, he keeps us. Yes, it does. Uh -huh. What does this word standard mean? Uh, number one is to be delivered. It's supposed to be displayed. Uh -huh. It causes others to flee away, to put to flight. I heard somebody say, the devil will come against you one way and flee from you seven ways. Seven ways. Meaning the number seven being completion. They completely leave you alone. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. But see, the standard, if you hide in his standard, there ain't nothing for the devil to run from. Come on, come on. Oh, come on now. If he's knocking on your door and you open the door, he ought to see you and run. Yeah. Amen. Because you are his standard. Hey. I, I, I said you are the standard. I'm not talking about go by yourself one of them flags and, and stick it out the door and wave it around before you open it. I'm talking about you are the standard. When people see you, well, they ought to see the standard of God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm. To the leaders, there's another standard. Mm -hmm. uh, the previous scripture was uh, for the note takers, Isaiah 59 and 19. Now I'm going to 62 and 10. Go through, go through the gates. Anytime God says anything twice, there's something behind it. Right. Go through, go through the gates. Prepare the way of the people. Preachers, teachers, leaders, that means parents too. Cast up, 
cast up the highway two times, gather out the stones, lift up the standard for the people. What are you saying? That which is unholy, get it out of your way. Come on. Cast up the stones, anything, the stumbling blocks, anything that would prevent you from pleasing God, to, 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 to walk away from his will, move them out of the way. In fact, he said, cast them. In order to cast, I got to, I can't hold on, I can't hold on to it. I got to, uh -huh, I got to cast it. I have to throw it yes. to get it away from me in case I'm tempted to pick it up. He says, look up a standard for the people, the gates of the church in the latter day. We in the latter days. Yes, we are. Uh -huh. Who shall stand open night and day that converts? Who shall flock into? It may enter in tree. Whether Jews or Gentiles, that's what the scripture says. Come on, Isaiah, help us. There's 60, look, there's 66 books in books, books in the Bible. <laughs> Told you Texas was long. <laughs> Look, I've been waking up, going to sleep, waking up, going to sleep for days. My body said, we, we, I used to drive down to LA, pick up my kids and bring them back. And it'd take me a week to get back to normal. Now here I am, 65, driving down the road for two days. What did Brian say, 27 hours? 28, 20, 29 hours. That's a long time to sit in anything. Right. I don't care if you got a couch that's comfortable. That's a long time. Amen. Now watch this. Let me go back through this real quick. Prepare the way of the people. <coughs> Did that sound like a suggestion? There's no option to it. Cast up. Cast up the highway. Lift up the way to God. Gather out the stones, the things that would cause stumbling to take away that out of your home, to take away that out of your heart, in your mind, that would cause you to make pain in the sight of our Lord. Mm -hmm. Do God feels pain? Of course he does. Can I go over to, uh, let me see, what do you say? Shall a man rob God? How are you gonna rob somebody that owns everything? <laughs> He owns everything. He owns you. Right. So what are you about him of? From him allowing that what he spoke over you to occur. The blessing to occur. If I can go out of town and pray for folks, and sometimes churchmen do things before God because they think they're in church, so they have to do that. Amen. Some folks think you ought to fall out when you get prayed for, but you don't do it no place else. So, Mister uh, Sister Jackie, my wife and I were at another church, and they brought in TV cameras. I seen people fall out. I ain't never seen people fall out. Before. I say you ain't you on the floor. You have a fit if there's something on the floor and you gotta step in it. Now, now you laying in it because somebody's watching. I went there and I said, "Look, God don't need no help. Holy Spirit don't need any help from you. I'm gonna pray that you be healed right now. Right now." I'm going to pray that he shows evidence of the healing now. Yeah. And if it is in his permissive will, he'll do it yeah. now. Yeah. Why? Because he's spoken in heaven. And he's just waiting for your obedience to do it now. Yeah. So, 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 oh God, it's not that he's making his will, should I heal them? He already spoke it. Hey. Come on. Come on, he says, I know the path you take. 
I know the thoughts that I have for you, and then they're good and not of evil. I know because I've already released it in heaven, and all I'm doing is waiting on you. Because I'm wondering why don't the people understand this? Why don't they get up in anticipation of what is in their heart when they pray for what's on their mind? Because we don't believe God. If we believe God, we get up. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You, you, you get in the line and you, ins you expect to get to the line and get what you came for. I don't care if it's a sandwich or a stamp from the DMV. When you get to the front of the line, you should have everything you came for. Everything that you anticipated in your mind should manifest itself right in front of you. Sir, what about the no 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 you want to, when I went through seminary and we had this man, this man, Dr. 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 Larry Stamper, Dr. Stamper, this man reads six to seven books a week. Wow. And I said, I ain't no way he the man. <clears throat> and he read my dissertation. The man said, and I looked at him like, all you doing is rubbing on the paper. You ain't reading nothing. <laughs> he closed it up. Gave it back to me and said, you said this on page 62. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I did. <laughs> and I'm the one who wrote it. <laughs> and then he told me what I said on this other page. This seemed like it conflicted with page 62. You really read that? Yeah. And that man would give homework like we could do it too. <laughs> Let me help you out. I can't do it. In fact, sometimes I read a paragraph and say, what did I just read? Yeah. I don't know. Better read it again. Might be something good in there. So I read it again. Because I like to look at every word. And so does he. He just does it faster. <laughs> Bless you in your ministry. Amen. That's the way you do it. That's, that's great. I can't do it like that. But see, the anticipation that he had for us was above us. The anticipation that God has for you is above us. It's not that it's above you or out of your reach. You don't see it. You didn't see it happen. There was no sign to say your blessing has arrived. Second Chronicles 2020, look, if you, a man, if you, a man, the word of God, and if you, a man, his prophets, you get what they brought to you. But if you say no, you shut your mind down to it, that can't happen. That's in your flesh. You're looking for unity in the flesh, and we're talking about something that battles with the spirit all the time. Oh. God said in Isaiah 26 and 1, he says, in that day shall this song be sung in the land of Judah, in the land of Judah, in the land of praise. Any praises in the house today? Yes. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. It says, we have a strong city. Yes. Y'all feel like you got a strong church? Yes. Amen. 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 Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Salvation will God appoint for walls in the bulwarks. God will appoint protection where his people are. Open ye the gates and the righteous nation which keepeth the truth may enter in. Thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusted in thee. When your mind is going through torment, when your mind is in a place where you're not comfortable with yourself, keep your mind on him. Right. Yes. Yes. And he'll bring you the peace you didn't have. Yes. Glory yes. God. Glory God. God. Glory if you choose not to, then the torment will stay. Yeah. Trust in the Lord forever, for the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. Come on, yes he is. This is the signal of the Lord, 
When you see this happen, oh, you know God is involved. See, in battle, leaders today, they look for the sign first before they say, I believe the Lord has. King David, he was anointed king in Hebron when he was a kid, sent back out into the field. He was anointed again in Hebron. Uh -huh. And then when he got to the city of David, that's not Hebron. When he got to, for the third time he was anointed. Uh -huh. and, and, and then he says in scripture, I believe, I perceive God has called me to be a king. How many times does God have to set a building on you to get you to understand that you are anointed and appointed. Come on, Pastor. Well, Pastor, you want to be talking about leaders. No, I'm talking about you. Right. Because you have people in your lives that you know, if they had a question, you become the answer. Lord God. Come on, mothers. Come on, fathers. Yeah. When your child comes to you with a question, they came to you with a question because God has put in you the answer. Hallelujah. When people come to you and begin to ask you questions and something down on the inside makes you smile because the answer came before they finished the question. How is it that you got an answer before I finish my question? It's because the Holy Spirit has anointed and appointed you and opened up that which he has assigned to you. I forget what grade they taught us in, but well, it's coming and it's going to be here in just a little while. Amen. But I'm not ready yet. That's what you said. Uh -huh. I don't know enough yet. Well, you're going to figure it out. Uh -huh. Because why? Because God's going to put a desire in you yes. to go up. Yes. Yes. To lift your yes. standard. Hey! But see, in God's purview, he does things a little bit different. In, in man's purview, the command knows what we're going to do. They don't tell the foot soldier. They just put you on a vehicle and take you someplace. And you say, where are we going? It's classified. <laughs> and then when you figure it out, oh boy. oh, boy. Then they put boots on the ground. Oh, Lord. Then people don't want you there. Oh, my gosh. What are we going to do now? What you want us to do now? Duck. <laughs> okay. Y'all, we got to duck. They send down commands from the top. But God says, in his purview, he wants everybody to know. Why do you say that? Because I'm not the only one that knows. And if I was, I'm not no more because I'm talking to you. Right. 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 See, see, it's a secret. God hid stuff in the Lord hid stuff in uh -huh, parables to hide it from the enemy. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But then he gave you a preacher. He gave you a preacher. I somehow came to the revelation after preaching in several other cities that God has called me to preach. And then they say stuff like crazy stuff when you're coming back. Right. <laughs> when y'all get closer to Manteca. Right. Because <laughs> driving ain't going to happen. <laughs> uh, uh. <laughs> Amen. But the purview is given by God that we would reveal and he would reveal through you. Because see, I can say something and you don't get it then it's not revelation for you. If I say it, then I must have received revelation from God. Because if I'm telling you stuff that I didn't see hear from him, then I'm out of line and subject to correction. I'd rather have you mad at me any day than the Lord. Amen. Amen. What happened to pastor? <laughs> what do you mean? I was looking at him and he went <laughs> 
That ain't gonna be me. Not, not if I can have purpose. Not if I have, if I can help it. Amen. I, I want to stay in my purpose. Yeah. Uh -huh. See, see, it's the preacher's purpose, purpose to teach the way to the access. It's not my way to teach you to fulfillment of the preacher's mind. That's why I don't tell you stuff like, let's start a building fund. We need our own building. I don't do that. When this place gets packed out and you get top, tired of sitting on top of each other, then you'll come up and say, Pastor, I think we need another church. <laughs> because, see, I don't want it to be my desire, but the desire of the body. Amen. Do I see it? I see it already, but I'm not putting it on you. Holy Spirit going to put it on you. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Because, see, I don't want you focused. There, there's some folks, I ain't going to church that why I ain't got no money. God said, the poor you will have with you always. Yeah. Now, he's talking about poor in spirit. He ain't talking about poor in money. Right. But at the same level, in the same understanding that I have, the revelation that I have, you can be poor in money and poor in spirit. Yeah. But you come to the house of the Lord. Yeah. Why? To be lifted up. Amen. To be brought to the yeah. standard. Yeah, yeah. 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 Not man's standard, but God's standard. But it's God's decision to give you revelation. It's God's decision to give you access. Because I can speak to something, and, and, and the person sitting next to you said, I got that. And you sit there going, what? It's not your time. But don't feel bad. Let me give you another scripture. By whom also we have access by faith into his grace, wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. You'll find that in Romans 5 and 2. Say so what? See, giving, God giving you access is a grace. Amen. He don't have to do it. Come on. Come on, Pastor. I just thank him for what little he gave me. I'm thankful for it. Because yeah. if I can't be thankful for it, there ain't no reason for him to give me some more. And he's a more God. Yes, he is. Say that again. He's a more God. Mm. Yes, he is. And you know what I like? I like more. Hey. I, I like looking at him saying, I didn't know I could do that. <laughs> Pray for somebody and they say, Ooh, it's gone. It is. <laughs> I didn't know I could do that. <laughs> and then God come up and say, You did not did. Yeah. Uh -huh. Here's another one Ephesians 2 18. I'm going to preach in a minute. Ephesians 2 18. For through, for through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. No man comes to the Father but by me. Right. Hallelujah. Right. Me, he's the only way and he's the only way. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes. It's not because of what he's going to do. It's because of what he's already done. Yeah. 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 So you waiting for him to do something. He already done what he's going to do. Yeah. Right. <laughs> In Genesis, God said, let us make man. Yeah. Who? Father, son. Excuse me. Father, the word. And the Holy Spirit yes. made man. Hallelujah. He said, "That's good." And when he finished his work, right after a woman, that's very good. <laughs> and you know what? I tend to agree. Because I wouldn't want to be hanging out with somebody that looked like me. I'm sorry. <laughs> so what you got there, man? You need to go treat your beard. <laughs> That ain't working for me, y'all. <laughs> she don't look nothing like me, but she fixes me. Oh, yeah. 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 Now let, let me take can I take a little no. rabbit trail? It's not really a rabbit trail, it means the word. Oh, let me just say it like this. Oh. If the full counsel of God in Genesis, God said, Let us make man, and he made man, and he made woman. Who man? And she's to be a help meet. Come on, man. M E E T. Right. Not M E A T. No. I thought I'd get an amen from some of the women in the house. Amen. And the brother's going, where's he going? Right. Right. 
She is my opposer. She's my opposite. So the things that I don't see, she has to see. Come on, come on. But after she sees it, I have to recognize it's through God. Yes. Yeah. Brings it through her to get yeah. to me. Yeah. Yeah. I can't beat myself up for not seeing it because it wasn't given to me to see it. If I have one of those. Right. Because he never did anything for nothing. He didn't give me her for nothing. He gave it to me to her and her to me with a purpose. Now he has a special place in his heart for those that stand alone. There are things that you have to go through, you have to go through alone because you're by yourself. And Holy Spirit will up his game and help you through. If you lean on him. If you're leaning on you, that's why it didn't work. Right. Or it didn't work like you anticipated. Because God can bless something and bring it to pass, and everybody being going, I didn't know you could do that. <laughs> How'd you do that? I got preachers that ask me when I tell them about our little congregation and, and where we worship. How'd you do that? Right. <laughs> yeah, but how'd you do it? <laughs> yeah, 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 I know, I know, but how did you get it done? <laughs> it's him. It's not me. It's favor. It's favor because he wrote me in the counsel of his mind, and he said, that which I have for you, no devil from hell can stop it, but you can delay it. Now, therefore, you have no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints. Mm, there's the word saints again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And of the household of God. Mm. See, we can only have access through him and by him. Yeah. We can't go any other way and get access to anything in the kingdom but by God. Hello, somebody. But understand something. The, the, the Bible calls us saints over 200, I believe, 50 something odd times. But he calls us Christians twice. Christian, one time. Christians, plural, two times. That's the second time. That's it. Because if you call for all Christians to show up, anything may pop up. <laughs> I mean, I'm a Christian. Why? Well, my grandmother was one. You ever been in church? Nope. You ever accept the Lord in your heart? Nope. Yes, sir. Yeah. Where is my access? Where's my access? Pastor, you got me access. No, ask yourself the question. Where is my access? He may have given you access, but did he give you everything right. that you have due for that season? See, we look to man to validate us, a rejection mindset. If man rejects you, you find somebody else that will accept you. If man rejects you, you'll get on the phone and call somebody to see if they agree with you. And if they don't, you hang up and call somebody else. Why? Because you need to be accepted. But God said, you are accepted in the beloved. Thank you. What are you saying? I accept you. I created you. I made you. And I made you to a purpose. And nobody can stop this purpose. So if nobody can stop the purpose that I put in you when I breathed air into you. When you took your first breath, I gave you your destiny then. I said when he breathed into you, because I was wondering to myself, when did I receive my purpose? Now, 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 I love y'all and I miss y'all, really did. But when I was at my daughter's house, I had nothing to do. Because I wasn't going outside in that heat. Right. It was enough to go from the car into the house, my friend. I ain't going back out there on purpose. <laughs> and when I did, turn on the AC. We get to the store. Can you park a little closer to the door? 
<laughs> so I can get there before I start sweating. Y'all with me today? Yeah. Uh -huh. And then my daughter, God bless her heart, ran out to the truck after dark. Came back in time. Please, to uh, mosquito, tore me up. I was like, she said, did you want to go somewhere? I ain't going out there. <laughs> I'm not giving no donations to anything in Texas. <laughs> that song, all my exes live in Texas. That's why I hang my hat in Tennessee. I can understand why you move. <laughs> Do they have airplanes for mosquitoes there too? Right. Hmm. He crazy, you know. That's why some of y'all here. Okay, so I missed y'all, but I had nothing to do because I'm not going outside for nothing. Now, did I go outside? Yeah, we went to eat, went to the store, but never at night. But I had time to ponder. And I was thinking to myself, because some of y'all be surprised about what the teacher said about you. <laughs> my, my, my homeroom teacher in high school said, come here, I want you to show you, see, show, show you something. And he showed me something when my fifth grade, sixth grade teacher wrote, wrote about me. I was like, I thought that man liked me. He didn't like me at all. Wow. But you like me, right? Yeah. Okay. I'm uh, good there. Uh. And I thought we was tight. Yeah. We wasn't. And I wasn't a scholarly type. I was a hard head. Why? <laughs> Come on, Paul, tell him being a hard head is useful to the Lord sometimes. Amen. You be hard head. I want you to change your religion. Mm -mm. I want you to mm -mm. give me the give me the ball. Mm -mm. You were playing with it. He was playing with it. He can whoop me. And I I'm giving you the ball. I'm gonna call the principal. Go ahead. I was hard headed. That's my permission to be hard-headed. Grandpa, no doubt. Okay. I got into a class and I was I found out that I was good with my hands. Why God made I thought it was good with my hands because of my daddy. Because of his status. Because if he wasn't doing upholstery, he was working on a car. Professionally. You alright? Yeah. So it's not what your mom and daddy did. This got you going on is God's provision for you. Amen. Yeah. Somebody say provision. provision. The Apostle Paul was a tent maker. That's what he did for provision. But his calling was an apostle. His calling for an apostle was even before he became a Pharisee. Then he became a Pharisee of Pharisee. <laughs> but that wasn't his purpose. That wasn't his calling. That wasn't his destiny. This predestined purpose God made, and Paul didn't see it. I became good with my hands. I worked on cars for a living. From 1975 on, I worked on cars. And I don't want to hear none of that. I went not yet. I don't know, so what? <laughs> then he made me so good at it, I started teaching it. Amen. Amen. Somebody say, open that door. Amen. God opened that door, and I was wondering, why am I teaching these people how to get a degree, and I'm not, I don't have one. And I didn't have one at that time. Talk to me, y'all. Mm -hmm. I'm helping folks get a degree, and I don't have one. <laughs> Somebody say, God. God. Mm -hmm. and, and then after I did that, he called me to ministry which I didn't want to have nothing to do with other than what y'all do. I wanted to sit there and go, you got some more. What did it say? Feed me to a one more. Feed me some more. I can take bags. I'll take some extra home. Amen. Amen. Then he moved me from entry level to advanced level in less than a year. And I was like, you sure about that? Uh, In fact, it was recognized by their sister of ours. She says, I watched y'all. And I watched God elevate you, us two. And I've never seen anybody move up that fast. So I'm going to say God. God. And then I got to the place where he called me the pastor. Ah, mm -hmm. oh, no. No. 
I know. I got enough trouble by myself. Now I got to deal with their troubles. He said, look, all you got to do is tell them. You reveal to them what I reveal to you. And if they don't do it, I'll deal with them. But if you don't tell them, I'm going to deal with you. <laughs> Amen. 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 How many of y'all used to hate the fact, oh, you don't messed up. Mama don't got a phone call. Yeah, daddy is almost home. Yeah. Right. Looking at the clock going, uh oh. Yeah. So you don't clean up your room. You don't did everything you can think of doing to try to ease the pain. <laughs> and when that man come through the door and mama don't give him no time to decompress, <laughs> you need to go talk to, oh, God. Now he's still under pressure, yeah. and he's going to come in there and vent on me. Right. Now I'm thinking, they're on annihilation. <laughs> Mama, please. <laughs> Don't tell him yet. <laughs> <laughs> and then you get in to see what happened was. And now he's upset with Mama, so he's going to take care of you, and then she comes. Don't kill him. You the one caused all this. You didn't have to tell him. So now he's mad at everybody. So that's I'm the only one. Right. No. See, I told you my grandparents raised me. My grandmother whooped me, my grandfather yelled at me. My daddy said, send him over here. I had to cut through the field. Hayward got fields. I cut through the field and he whooped me too. I don't remember what I did, but I'm pretty sure I didn't do it again. Because that never happened again. <laughs> I missed a sign. It snuck up on me, but I missed a sign. Okay, okay, let me just go on. Hallelujah. In Genesis, God said, I'm a man in my own likeness and my image, my likeness and my image, my likeness. That's why he said, don't make no graven images. I already made one. It's you. Walk my heart time. I ain't even got to my main script yet. What happened? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> if the Lord says so. Amen. Yes. Yes. I gotta I gotta at least touch on it. But I need you to understand something. Therefore, pray not for these people, neither lift up nor cry nor prayer for them. Neither make intercession to me, for I will not hear you. And we wonder why we don't have a blessing from God. Jesus. Because God told me, don't pray for you. Does he do stuff like that? He did stuff like that. When I read this, I was like, wow. Because I did that. One we had another church. One the young lady walked up and said, uh, Elder Johnson, will you pray for me? I said, Go. And she stopped. She said, What'd you say? Right. You are elder in the church of God of Christ. You supposed to pray for me. I said, God told me not to. He just told me no. Because what he already told you, you haven't done yet. Oh. And she said, I mm -hmm. went back to her seat. The following Sunday, she said, I did it. I said, you did what? She said, everything God told me to do, I've done it. I moved that man out of my house because he wasn't my husband. Mm -hmm. and, and, and when she said that, you know what I did? Whack. Uh, and got to praying. She was the brunt of many conversations. She was talked about by the women in the church to the point where I saw her one day at City Hall. I said, how you doing? Said, she said, well, I'll pray for you. I said, what's going on now? She said, same old stuff, but Lord, I just pray for her. She didn't talk bad about him. She didn't, her look. she didn't crack her mouth to talk bad about the few people to talk bad about her. She just prayed for her. And God elevated her to missionary. See, no devil from hell can stop what God has planned for you because he's going to give you access at the right time. Come on. Uh, gifts. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And then anointing brings you. Glory. Mm. 
how do I get and keep my access? Well, the scripture I was going to use, but it looks like I'm out of time. And by the way, there's a, there's a sub topic. We're talking about Jehovah Nisi today. I, I didn't even put them on notes, but it's, that's where he started me at. Jehovah Nisi. Jehovah Nisi. Jehovah Standard. He said, if I be lifted up, yes. I'll draw all men. Yes. See, the stuff you're going through, you look at everywhere but the standard. You look at that man standard because they're always in your face talking about it. But he said, seek me and you shall find me. Knock and the door shall be opened. Uh -huh. You look for God's standard. Why do we raise our hands when, when we pray, when we worship? Because God is the standard. Yeah. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. He's Jehovah Nisi. Jehovah Nisi. You mean we're going to go through the Jehovah series? Yeah, I think that's a good idea. I was wondering what the key is, and can, can, can I get two more minutes? Can I get two minutes? Five minutes. Five minutes, ten minutes. Look, I'm the pastor. I'm back. Y'all been, look, I, I've been going for two Sundays. Did you miss me? Yeah. If you missed me half as much as I missed you, you missed me. Ephesians 5 and 1, uh -huh. be ye therefore followers of God, not man, as dear children. You know how children are. No matter what you do to them, little rascal, they still keep running back up to you because they need something. But you understand, it says, and walk in love. Don't be sour. Don't be bitter. Mm -hmm. As Christ also has loved us and has given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God. For a sweet smelling savor. Yes. And if you don't have God in your life, then you stink. <laughs> and every time you crack your mouth, mm. it's even worse. It, it, we worse than morning breath. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty bad. <laughs> On your best day, you're worse than morning breath. <laughs> <laughs> Pastor, you cold. That's real. God don't want to talk to you unless you say, Lord, forgive me for I've sinned. Christ died for my sins, placed in a borrowed tomb, and he was born of a virgin. Let me put that in there too. Put in a borrowed tomb on the third day was risen. You rose the standard. You rose up the standard. Yes. Christ is our standard. Yes. 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 Hey, glory to God. Christ is the standard by which we live. Christ is the standard by which we access the power of the Father. Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. He says, and, and then he goes on to talk about all the different sins that you can get yourself into. Uh -huh. From verse 3 to verse 6, skip those, we go on to verse 7. And he says, be ye not therefore partakers with them. The whoremongers, the liars, uh -huh, uh -huh. read it when you get home because the pastor run out of time. <clears throat> For ye were sometimes darkness. He didn't say you were sometimes in darkness. He says sometimes you were in darkness. <coughs> You were the darkness in somebody's life. I sent you there to be an answer, and you became a Christian. Ooh, this is what it's like to be a Christian. I came to you for an answer. And I'm, what I'm looking at, I get that in the world. A good friend of ours going on to glory now. He's with the Lord, I'm sure. He told me, I made a deal with the devil. I was like, well, he said, I want to be strong. And he's Palo Alto on this boy. For sure. They say he's seeing walking down the street, a speaker under this arm, one on the show. <laughs> Don't bend in somebody's house. He said the devil would tell him what room the people was in, and he'd go in another window oh, and take their stuff. See my head where I said? Mm -hmm. But he was strong as an ox. This dude was solid as a concrete block. But that's what he wanted from the devil. 
And then one day the devil said, walk down the street and whoever looked you in the face, shoot him in the face. And he was walking, there was four guys walking towards him. He said, here we go. And all four of them just said, whoop, whoop, and they kept going. Then he questioned himself, what am I doing? Then he called on the right name. He said, God, what am I doing? And the Lord in a moment showed him everything he was doing. And he said, I repent. Put down the gun. Quit stealing. And you know what? He was having issues with his girl. He says, I can't, I'm not going to put hands on you, so I'm leaving the house. He left the house. He had a couple of meetings. And she called a popo on him. And it violated him. So he went back to prison. And when he came out, he was skinny, frail looking. Hmm. He had diabetes and they wouldn't help him at all. He almost died in there from diabetes. But all that strength he had that he made a deal for was gone. See, God, when he blesses you, he don't take it back. <laughs> the devil will give you just enough to get you out of fellowship with God and then drop you like a disease. That's right. That's right. That's right. He did it to get you out of your access point. Understand something. That 80 mile an hour sign didn't count before you got to the sign. It only counts from the sign forward. But see, I didn't see the first one. Probably didn't see the second one because everybody was passing us. I'm like, God, these people be driving out here in the desert. Because I didn't see it. But it wasn't that it did it did because I didn't see it did not invalidate the fact that it was there. Because I don't see God's blessing doesn't invalidate that he's already done it. Before I, before I knew he had already called it to be. Before I understood it, he had already called it to be. He's already called you. What he's doing is waiting on you to get out of your way. There's no way you can fail if you keep your hand in his because the path that you are look like you ain't making right because he didn't call you to that. Oh, the fruit of the spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. You're going to pass the test. You didn't pass the test. You had notes under your leg. <laughs> Proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. It's not that he said we needed proof. Mm -hmm. He said, I'm offering it. I'm offering you the validation that I've called you because I anointed your path. And everybody's saying stuff like, I didn't know you could do that. And you like, do what? Because it came so simple to you. If you want the full counsel of God, you got to get away from sin. That's right. Yeah. Amen. I was talking to the brothers the other night. I'm almost done. Let me just make it to 1130. Yeah. Yeah. I was talking to the brothers the other night. And I said, what causes God to turn his face from you and don't hear your prayer? They said, sin. I said, that's good. That's good. But he said, if you love me, do you love me? Yes. 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 I said, no hand go up. Oh, one in the back. Did you love him? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> then he said, if you love, if you love me, yeah. then keep my commandments. Yeah. It don't end there. No. He said, keep my commandments. And then he said, keep my statutes. Not tell it, tell it. Huh? Look, the apostle Paul wrote some stuff. He says, I, I, I do this by permission, not command. Hmm. Husbands love your wives as Christ loved the church. Yeah. So if I'm to do, that's a statute. That's a standard. Yeah. It wasn't a command, it was a statute. Excuse me, a standard. He said, keep my commands, my statutes. So if I'm to keep your, because see the commands is easy. Ten commandments, we, we can find them, they're on the wall. I got them in my office. 
on no thing. Amen. It's in your Bible. It's in Exodus. Amen. Uh -huh. so, so you can find the commands and, and say, okay, and then Jesus added two more. Love yourself and love the God. Love your neighbors and, and as you love God. Um, but, 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 but the statue things, where are they? They're everywhere from cover to cover in the Bible. Because the Old Testament is there for our learning. <laughs> so, so if I'm going to keep the statutes, then I have to hide your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Because if I don't keep the statutes, I'm sinning. Yes. Yes. And now when I pray, all I'm doing is echoing off the paint job in the room. But I want the full counsel of God's purpose. I want, I want everything on a silver platter laying in front. It's not going to work that way. It's like a child striving to get F's and then wonder why he don't get a diploma. Or, or, or got some D's and wonder why you kicked off the team. Don't get kicked off the team. Hallelujah. Go for the full counsel. If you love God, keep his commandments and his statutes. I'll break off the third one in the next time, but, but understand this. If we don't do what God said, he can't do what he's planned. Come on, come on, come on. I encourage you to read. Amen. Okay, I'm going to exercise my pastoral uh, latitude. He says, be not fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove, speak to it, reprove it, speak to it. Yeah. I know that's from the devil. Talk to it. That's from the devil. Mark it. But in all things, reprove. All things are reproved and made manifest by the light. When you're walking in the light, darkness got to flee from you. Right. Right. Wherefore he said, Awake thou that sleepeth, and arise from the dead. The works of sin is death. For Christ shall give thee light. See then that you walk circumspectly. That's a nice word. Yes. Uh -huh. Not as fools, but as wise. Circumspectly means to say perfect or diligently. Well, it ain't perfect. That's your standard. That's not God's standard. God's standard said you'd be perfect for where you are. And where you are is not where I brought you to be. I'm taking you further. You ain't there yet. When you stand before me and you've done everything I've told you to do, now you kind of, you can look at it, mm -hmm, perfect. I just don't want to stand before a living God and say, mm -hmm, uh, enter in, come on in. Mm -hmm, good and faithful. Why wouldn't you want to hear that? Because see, I don't want to hear almost. I don't want to get there and find out I left a couple of things undone. So when I went to Texas as a spectator and he said, get to work, I did. When he sent me to Fresno, I did that. When he said, preach, my own, preach your own mom's funeral, our bishop stood there and said, that's all. Was it hard? Yeah. I feel like somebody that was hiding in a manhole in the middle of the street and raised up at the exact wrong time and caught a face full of truck bumper. That's how I felt. But it missed my face, hit me in the chest. It just, oh. But I perceived that he wouldn't have called me to it if I could go through it. He's not going to call you to something that he's not going to bring you through. Amen. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. <laughs> he made me a teacher of something that I did for a living and became easy to me. And then took teaching about cars, to teaching people about access to the power they didn't know it could have. If you walk away from sin, if you 
rebuke it, reprove it, and give it to the Lord. Say, Lord, I'm walking away from this, and it hurts me to do, but I'm doing it for you. Amen. Amen. He is faithful. Yes, and he will bless you. Hallelujah. Yes. Glory, glory, glory. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 If you amen him. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. You'll get what he gave you. You didn't see it happen. You didn't see the sign. You just looked up and had it. And then you say to yourself, <laughs> Amen. I'm, I'm going to mess with that's Jackie. Because that girl like to roll. She'll tell you she like rolling. So you see somebody go, that's Pff. Jackie. She like to roll. Ooh. Amen. Amen. Yeah. But down there, the limit changed, but I didn't see it. It didn't invalidate the fact that I could have. And I've been wasting all this time. And I could have went faster. I could have been further. So some of you tell me, I'm going to go back to school. Every semester you delay is a semester away from your paycheck. Mm -hmm. What y'all looking at mama for? I see you. So I see things you can't see. You understand that? Every time you delay drawing closer to him, when you finally get there, you're going to say, why did I wait so long? I could have been doing all of this a long time ago. That's right. Hallelujah. As we prepare for the Eucharist, this is first Sunday we, we, we celebrate the Lord, and, and, amen, and what we call the Lord's Supper, amen. We're going to take communion. Is that all right? Yeah. So let me do this. Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask you, oh God, Holy Spirit, be with us today. Forgive us our failures, our sins, our shortcomings, Father. Mm. Somebody's being distracted now with discomfort in their bodies. God, I pray you would arrest it right now. Just take it out, cancel it. Pain, get out of that body. You have no rights to it. Mm. I say this by command and not permission. Flee now while you can. Yes. For this body belongs to the Lord. Yes. Mm. If you felt it leave, God, give God a hand praise. <laughs> Forgive us our sins, our failures, God. Collectively. And let us, when we bend our knees and seek heaven, that we would forgive, be forgiven of our sins individually. This bread that we are about to receive, sanctify it, God, to represent your body. And this juice, also known as wine, sanctify it to represent your blood. In Jesus' name. The Apostle Paul wrote a letter to the church at Corinth dealing with an issue. In 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter, 23rd verse, Paul writes, for I received of the Lord that which I also delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, take ye, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. Paul goes on to say, For as often as ye eat this bread and drink of this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink of this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, 
and so let him eat that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. Wherefore, my brethren, when ye come together to eat, tarry, wait, one for another. And if any man hunger, let him eat at home, that ye come not together unto condemnation, and the rest I will set in order when I come. Amen. The Apostle Paul was dealing with gluttony for those that were at the front of the line were eating the full meals, not the cracker that we are about to do. Amen. Go ahead and peel that thing back. Get your little wafer. This represents the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Church, take a knee. It's difficult sometimes, something this small, you're afraid you'll flip it over and, oh my gosh. This represents the blood of our Lord and Savior. Don't miss a drop. Don't miss anything he has for you. He went through too much to get it to you. Take a drink. Twain. Amen. <laughs> You know what I'm talking about. But I wonder what the bitterness of what he went through. If we would just live like he called us to, it would turn into sweetness. Give God a